We thank you for life that we receive through Christ Jesus. And Lord, we come to realize more and more that we can be set free by your truth. And Jesus is truth. So Lord, I pray that we will continue, continue to allow Christ to abide in these hearts of ours and to live out his righteous obedience life through us, that we might be instrument in your hand for the saving of souls. So grant us your presence as we now go through the, your divine healing plan. We pray for the Spirit of God to guide us and the angels be in the midst of us. Bless those that are here. Bless those that are gathering online. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Let's see what God has in store for us this evening as we go through his holy word. And thank God for water works. Water works. All right. So we're going to talk about water works. In the book of John 10.10. 10. Anybody know that text by heart? John 10.10. 10. The Bible says the thief come to kill, to rob, and to steal. And I come to give you life <clears throat> and life more abundantly. That's John 10.10. 10. 10. 10, 10. All right. You have your medical books? Let me see. Let me see what you got. You have a medical book? You sure? All right. Mm -hmm. My lady Tofu, you got your medical book? I'm just checking. I want to be sure I don't see no cell phone. <laughs> Flip those pages. You saw those pages were moving on the screen, right? Your phone can't do that, man. <laughs> All right. Let's read this together. What does it say? Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Let's read it together. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. So this text tells us that God owns us by creation and redemption. He has given us an owner's manual, which is the word of God. And therefore, every product comes with a manufacturer's owner's manual. So we're going to go into God's plan. All right. Can you see that on the screen here? All right. So let's look at this. What's that first doctor up there? Trust. God, godly trust. Give that a minute. Godly trust. What's the next one? Open air. And the next. Come on. And the next one. Sunshine. Proper rest. Lots of water. Always temperate and nutrition. All of these are found in the book of Genesis. And those who are joining us online, we definitely, you can download this wonderful handout here called God's Plan Rx. These laws are in this little handout and describe them in somewhat little detail and begin you on your help walk with God. So in Psalms 119, 73, it says, Thy hand have fashioned me and give me under made me and give me understanding and I shall keep thy commandments. Psalms 119, 73. Now, Jesus was 100 percent human as 100 percent God. Hello. Hmm? So Christ in the flesh, and according to Hebrews 10, 5, wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared me. So when Jesus walked this earth and concerning that he was the express image of Father, Jesus kept the eight laws of health. Here you find in the book of Matthew and John, godly trust. Jesus had godly trust. In Matthew 5, 1, 8, and 1, Jesus breathed fresh air. In Matthew 4, 18, John 1, 3, 6, Jesus got daily exercise. And in Matthew chapter 5, verse 1, chapter 8, verse 1, Jesus received plenty of sunshine. And Jesus got proper rest, according to Mark 4.38, Mark 1.35. And Jesus drank plenty of fresh water, John 4.7. Jesus always was temperate, had things under control, moderate, abstained from that which was detrimental to his spiritual health. And Jesus ate food that was nutritious, Luke chapter 7, verse 36, Luke 14, verse 1 and 2, and John 8. 29. Jesus is our example. The law of life. Sunrise, sunset. We find that he appointed the moon for the season. The sun knows it's going down. 
So even nature is governed by law. Laws of gravity, airplane, space, space uh, shuttles, travel speed, we realize here, the moon, the earth, the sun. The sun traveled 486,000 miles per hour. We find the moon traveled 2,888 miles per hour and the earth 67,000 miles per hour. Now here we are on planet earth and we don't, we're not moving. <laughs> Gravity, the law, keep these entities in their place and they're not colliding or coming across one another pathway. That says a lot about the awesome God that we serve, huh? Even we, we, we hear now in these latter days a lot of floods are taking place, but the, war, but the earth would never be inundated with water. The next time it would be fire. So we find here in Job 38, 8, 11, who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as if it had issued out of the womb and said, hitherto shall I come, but no further. And here shall our proud ways be stayed. You know, we can draw a spiritual lesson from this too. You know, we're talking about the waves. It says the, when the flood of godly men waves, waves could be trouble coming upon us, but they have a boundary in our life. God has set boundaries for the troubles that come upon us. Thank God for that. The law of God, a burden, restriction, or protection. What's your answer? Is it a burden, restriction, or protection? What do you think? You sure it's a protection? Restriction or protection? Mm, why do people do, why do people lean into it and keep on going then? Huh? That's depending on what country you come from. <laughs> All right, we don't have to. We have folks with us across the world now. John 14, 15. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. All right, we got love, we got labor, and we got law. So here we have the eight laws of health, therapeutic value and application of God's plan. In the book called Counseling of Dies and Food, page 17, paragraph 3, it says, it is as truly a sin to violate the laws of our being as it is to break the Ten Commandments. To do either is to break God's law. Those who transgress the law of God in their physical organism will be inclined to violate the law of God spoken from Mount Sinai. All right. Then in the same book, page 18, it says, since the laws of nature are the laws of God, it is plainly our duty to give these laws careful study. We should study their requirements in regard to our own bodies and conform to them. Ignorance in these things is sin. So God give us some admonition here. We need to study these laws. And that's what we have been doing occasionally in Saturday afternoon. The eight doctors that make house call. So Proverbs 22, 3 says, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. We have learned that that statement has great significance. We find that here, well, I'm going backwards. Where well, I'm going backwards here. Prudent man. Prevention is better than what? Cure. That's what it means. Prevention. The fence or the ambulance. We know we want the fence. Protect us. Ambulance, there's a place. Intervention. Intervention or emergency. So we realize the basis of health. In Exodus 15, 26, God says, <clears throat> If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that what? Healeth Heal thee. God declares himself as the chief physician. The basis of health is obedience by God's grace. Always a cause. For Proverbs 26 2 says, the curse causes should not come. Job said in Job 29 16, the cause which I knew not, I searched it out. Find the cause. 
So we find cause to effect. Cause to effect. So we have this sowing and reaping principle. You reap what you sow. The reaping is greater than the sowing. The reaping is not immediately. As it is in the natural world, so it is in our walk. Whatever we sow, we shall reap. It might not come immediately, but it shall come. That's a principle, cannot be altered or changed. Now, who remember the most profound definition of disease that you ever read in your entire life? What does it say? Mm -hmm. Y'all said that with authority. Say it backwards then. I just boosted up your immune system for 24 hours. Health allows the violation, A, from result, that condition, from system, the free to nature of effort, and A, is disease. Record plays back. All right. So therefore, friend or foe. So why you say disease is a friend? You tell you something wrong, huh? Hmm? Because right here we read that disease is an effort. So it's a friend that's trying to help your body to rid itself of the encumbrance. So like checking the engine, check engine time. All the lady like. Light keep coming on, tells you that something's wrong. And so, therefore, you know that costs some money, so you just don't want to hear that, see that, so you just break it out. So did that solve your problem? No. Didn't solve the problem. Why? Because treating symptoms like mopping the floor while the water continues to pour. So what's the solution to this problem then? Turn the water off. Now, these are examples of disease work. All the above are efforts of nature, coughing, sneezing, running nose, fever. The body is exerting vital force to free the system or condition that results from the violation of laws of health. And so, like we said, I mean, that might be a time you might take a cough suppressant, an antihistamine, or aspirin for the fever, but that does not solve the problem. We got to get to the cause. In the book, Ministry of Healing, we find that Jesus is the great physician. Now, anyone can name, get a mic, the four steps we need to take. Who can share that with me? Got a mic, anybody? Who has the courage? I see y'all passing the mic on. Why y'all passing the mic? You got it in your hand. Do you want to speak? She rubbing her eyes. Ascertain the cause. All right, ascertain. All right, ascertain the cause. What's the second one? Give her, the, give her the mic. Give her the mic. You want the mic, dear? No. All right, you got the mic. You, you have the mic, my dear. What's the Change next? Change unhelpful conditions. What's the first one? Ascertain the cause. Second one. Change unhelpful conditions. Third one. Correct wrong habits. Fourth one. Then assist nature mm -hmm. in their efforts to rid the system. Where you get that? Uh, expel the system. Where you get that information from? Uh, Ministry of Healing, page 127. You sure? Yes. I may not be wording it right at the bottom, but you did pretty good, my dear. That, that's it. Yeah. What school did you go to in the first place? No, that's all right. Don't worry. School of Christ oh. and <laughs> Meet Ministries <laughs> Home Study Course. Yeah, you. Meet with, with apostrophe, apostrophe S. Not you you said that very fluently. You know, it's very correct. So correct wrong habits. Then we want to assist nature. Then, and here we are. So remember that this, you repeat this because repetition deepens the impression. When people have a problem, you want to first ascertain the cause. You know, I get calls at least every day or every other day, and they want to take this. So I... Yeah, you know, what can I take? That's all they ask. So we send them our health and nutrition form. We 
ascertain the cause. See what conditions need to be changed and habits. And then we provide support for their needs. The doctor of the future, said Thomas A. Edison, the doctor of the future will give little medicine, but will interest his patient in the care of the human frame, diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. So we find some of the cause could be spiritual, could be physical, or God's opportunity to glorify himself. This is where it falls, disease falls into it. Cure also is classified, curse is also classified as disease. So we find the disease come with a cause. Cause to effect. Cause to effect. The cure is in the cause. So what does that mean to us? Cure is in the cause. Hmm? You find the cause, folks out there. Say it again. If you find the cause, you have the cure. So the average person, now they need to understand the laws of health because disease come as a result of violating the laws of health. So we got to find the cause and we go to the law to see which law we are violating or laws. We're violating. Very important. So what about genetics? Hmm? We're born with cancer. We're born with diabetes, all those things. But what about genetics? So heredity is not destiny. We might inherit the predisposition of disease. So we find heredity loads the gun. That means we might inherit predisposition from our parents, and et cetera, et cetera. So the gun is loaded. Now, what pulls the trigger? Lifestyle pulls the trigger. Now, what is lifestyle? Give me a description. Lifestyle. Same habit as you got the uh, disease from your parents. What their well, lifestyle was, you take hold of their mm -hmm. lifestyle. Okay, it's, but we got to describe what it is. Cooking, what you eat, what you drink, eat, how you sleep. That's you lifestyle. Sleep. That's lifestyle. Work. That's right. That's lifestyle. How Those. you speak. Lifestyle. Search out the cause of I was a father to the poor, the cause which I knew not. I searched it out. Now, does God have a plan for curing disease? Yes, he does. And that plan is affordable health care plan. Hmm? Let's go back. What's going on here? Obamacare, right? It is affordable health plan. Now, why is it affordable? What makes it affordable? All right, it's the Bible. But look at these. <laughs> so let me go ahead and say, it's affordable. Look at God, godly trust. Do you need money to pay for that doctor, Dr. Trust? Yes. Oh, no, not that one. Uh, follow me now. What about Dr. Open Air? You need money for that? No, you just go outside. Mm -hmm. What about Dr. Sunshine. Sunlight? Sunshine. Go outside. What about doctor exercise? Go outside. What about doctor rest? Go to Go bed. bed. <laughs> <laughs> what about doctor water? Just drink it there. Go to the well. Go to the well. Now what about doctor temperance? Abstaining from that which is harmful, self-control, moderation, that was good. You, that costs any money? No. Cost any money? You just have to put a does it cause any money? No. No, it doesn't Put a cause it. Put your throat. Put your knife to your throat. I'll make a choice. Now, make what about choice. Dr. Nutrition? Now, this is where people say it costs some money. It costs some money to eat the way God wants us to eat, a plant-based diet. So how will you address that? Hmm? It's not a garden. All right, that's true. It's not a garden. A garden is Now, what is, the, what is the most quickest way to help a person? The choices that you make. There's a choice. Now, you remember one occasion we were doing a, a seminar and we had to go uh, the day, I think on Sunday, to get some God's Pharmacy uh, material. And one of the uh, participants was, was in the store. And so they were there for the whole week here in our lecture. So they was in the store. And I'm told I saw the person, but I bagged back. Because I did not want to surprise them because they had their shopping cart was loaded. Now, they just spent a whole week 
listen to these lectures. That's why I know that you can give the best lectures in the world. You can throw up the ugliest picture in the world. You can frighten people into the truth, and they might do it for one moment. So this person had the shopping cart with all kinds of goodies, processed food, nothing that would say that they heard anything. And so I hid myself because I didn't want to shock them. So they went and cashed out. So when we came back together, I just wanted to share. Now, nutrition is what you call exchange, exchange. And what I saw in the shopping chart, cart, the woman spent over $100 for all the food, all right? I don't think the only thing that was in the shopping cart was fresh fruit or vegetable. But everything else, white bread, sugar, things of that nature. So now, person said, well, nutrition is expensive. And they spent $100. Now, exchange means if you got five pounds of sugar, what can you exchange that for? Fresh fruit. Fresh fruit. You could probably find some nice little honey. What about all the breads and the flesh food? You can get whole grains. That's right. Whole grain bread. What I'm saying that Cereals. people not automatically going to follow this program. No, because we are people of habit. Well, that's right. We all are. So you have to show them how to make these increment steps. They say, I cannot afford it. I say, let's see what can you take out of that shop, shopping cart and place it with something better, something better. So in telling them, hey, don't do that, you got to show folks how to make that transition. So it is affordable health plan, God's plan. So godly trust, it relieves stress. Open air, purified blood. Daily exercise, strengthen the cell. Sunshine, activate genes. Proper rest, repairs the body. Lots of water keeps us functioning. Always temperate, protects from harm. And nutrition, our medicine. That's those laws. Those precious eight doctors. Now, we're going to look at Dr. Water. We're going to look at Dr. right here, Dr. Water, for the moment. Let's see what we can find out by Dr. Water. Dr. Water. I keep going backwards around here, huh? Maybe it's for your repetition. What do you think about that? Lots of water. You saw waterworks, lots of water. Lots of water. Water of life. For with thee is the fountain of life. Psalms 36, 9. Water. Genesis 2, 10. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. We find Eden restored. We find, and he shewed, me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Water, lots of water. And let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever let him take the water of freely. Your body and my body is between 70% and 80% water. Our body, 70 to 80% water. Water. You are what you drink. Hmm? You are what you drink. The brain is 75% water. Heart, 75% water. Lungs, 86% water. Kidneys, 83% water. Muscles, 75% water. Blood, 83% water. Water. Now, I remember when I was in school and when I was playing uh, bas playing basketball, I did not drink water. I drank sports water. And my arthritis continued with me. I had to get treated up, either have pain reliever injections, because I did not drink water. And when I started drinking water and eliminate certain items out of my diet, that 10-year that battle with arthritis went away within one year just with water and removing certain items. But water is important. You see it up here? It's important. Mike, we got a mic uh, back But the teacher, um, if you're in the hot sun, in the high humidity working, is it safe to drink water throughout the day or should we mix it with something else? When I say mix it, not mm -hmm. together, but drink the water and you could drink something else like 
like coconut water or something like that for for heavy sweating? Is it safe to well, do that? Well, coconut water is different than different other drinks because of the electrolytes. But however, if you don't have coconut water, water. Just plain water? Plain. So you add some salt to it? To no, you don't need no salt to it unless you have a deficiency of sodium. But I will not add salt to my water. You need pure water. And just sweat every day like an animal? Sweating is part of your, your eliminating system. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that sweating. But you don't want to become dehydrated as we go through. It's dehydration that produced the problem. So just continue drinking plain water. That's right, plain water. Okay. You know, you don't need to take any electrolytes or add salt to the water. That is not needed. As I said, drink that pure water freely. We'll see as we go on. We find water is the key to all bodily function, circulatory, digestion, elimination, temperature control, cartilage cell. This was my problem. I didn't drink no water. Now, water lubricates the joints. All the joints. It lubricates the joints. We find water affects the mood. Depression and irritability is largely due to a lack of water. Wow, your brain is over 80% water. So when there's dehydration, there's inflammation. The brain cannot function. Now, if you and I did not have any kidneys, we would have to drink, Brother Carl, 800 glasses of water a day if we didn't have any kidneys. Now, you think people on dollars think every day when you get, when you're able to, when you're able to urinate and go to the bathroom and urinate, as some people say, pee, urinate, thank God for your kidneys. They functioning. You have to drink 800 glasses of water a day, a day. Notice this. The human body consists of 60,000 miles of blood vessels. This will circle the equator two and a half times. Two and a half times. It says here, the red blood cells. Notice, the red blood cells travel through the blood vessel at a speed of 43 and a half miles an hour. 60,000 miles going in a straight line. Going around the Earth equator two and a half times. 43 and a half miles an hour. You cannot walk that fast. Are you with me? Are y'all with me in here now? Yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Is that what you heard? Mm -hmm. I'm just checking y'all, okay? All right. So if it should be all right. All right. I just want to be sure. Now, water helps you to be alert and think more clearly. More clearly, water. Not the orange juice could be good. Not the smoothie, but water. The brain. It says help fight infection, come back fever, toxicity, increase metabolism. That means it's going to aid in the body processing the nutrients that occurs in most illness. Water. Water. Dehydration causes malfunction in the cells and tissue. Life ceases when you, when you lose about 20% of body water. 20%. 20%. Helps maintain body temperature. Keeping it cool causes water. Keeping it cool. Water. If you are sweating excessively, drink more water to replace the lost fluid. Okay. What well, brother teacher? What about the, when you eat fruits? Mm. The percentage of water that's in the fruit also, even watermelon and other things. Well, that's good. But remember now, when you eat the fruit of watermelon, the body got to extract got to distill that from the fruit. Mm -hmm. So you're creating more of energy output. But when you're drinking pure water, there's no energy being expended to extract that. But you do get water from you the You do fruits. get water, but that is not to take the place of water because okay. you've got to digest. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So the juice, the, the water from the fruit does not take the place when we're going to learn how much water you should drink. But that's good. But at the same time, you realize that the nutrients that's in those foods must be processed. If we're not getting enough water, what we, we saw metabolism. So remember, fruit does not replace actually pure water. So if you're not, now listen, here we go. If you do not drink enough water, and we are so fearful of what we made because God knew 
When sin occurred, we're just not going to take care of these bodies of ours. So he built within the system compensation. So if you and I do not drink enough water, the body would take water, number one, from the blood. So the first thing, if people got thick blood and the doctor give them blood thin medication, ask them before they give medication, how much water are you drinking? Anybody listen to what I'm saying? They're going to get, well, let me uh, choose what I say around here. <laughs> It would take water from the bones. That's what happened to me when I was up there in college, that it pulls water from those joints. Not enough water. Water from the liver. Water from skin. That's your largest detoxifying agent. Water from your colon. Constipation would take place. Water from the brain. So if you and I are not drinking enough water, these are areas that the body will compensate, pull from, pull from. And eventually, it takes water from the cells. Brother Teacher? Yes, sir. So maybe that's why people have skin that likes scales, scaly, scaly sin, Not skin, enough skin, because the lack of water that's is That's one of the reasons. One, one of the, the reasons. Reason. One of the reasons, because other reasons, because of the fat content, not enough fat, proper fat. Nutrition deficiency, biotin, foods that's high in those supplement for the skin. But water will create dehydration and will cause the skin to become texturized or not platable. Clogs the pores up because the body is taking water from the skin. So that would be one of the contributing factors, Cobb. So the current of life, the water in you. It says here, 75% in the body, we go all the way once again. And then it talk about in the saliva, that's your saliva, in the pancreatic juice, the liver bowel, in perspiration, in the brain, in the nerves, in the heart, in the lungs. This is where your water is, we find, and in the liver. The body produces one quart of moisture in breath, that's respiration. When you breathe, that's one, every time you breathe, more breathe, you're giving out one quart of moisture that got to be replaced by hydrating yourself with water. Hmm? We, we find importance of water. Water breaks down the food and prepares for absorption and use in the cells. When there is a deficiency, the process of elimination will continue, but the blood and tissue will be robbed of some of the water content, this hindering their normal process. Lack of water, lower blood pressure, headache, constipation will result. Kidneys, pores, and lungs will be hindered from eliminating waste. It will accumulate in the body. That's all lack of water. How much water should we drink? Take your body weight, divide it by two, and this tells you how many ounces of water you are to drink each day. So if I weighed 180 pounds divided by two, that'd be 90 ounces of water a day. Now, if I want to know how many glasses, I divide that by eight. Eight into 90, that roughly gives me what? Something like 10, 11, 11 plus glasses of water a day. <clears throat> Say I need to drink 11 glasses of water a day. How should we drink that water? Hmm? We should sip it. Sip it. We should chew our liquid and drink our food. Now, what does that look like? Anybody can tell me what that looks like? <clears throat> we, should, we should chew our liquid and drink. Chew our liquid. Huh? Let me see you do that, what you just did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, that, is, is that how you drink water? This is what you did. Now, this way, a lot of us drink, you know. Mm, 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 mm. Now, what that does, that put pressure on your kidneys. Drink like that. I put pressure on your kidneys, which had to release quite a bit. So when you talk about chew your liquid, huh? you just hold it, mix it with the mucous membrane on the lining of your, of your mouth, That's how you drink water. Very easy. Now, I was getting ready, I was getting ready to give you an example, or say another example, but I don't think it'd be appropriate for BC. But now we AC. 
Thanks. Thank wise watchmen of God. I must come visit my meat ministry family soon. I think it's that Nisi Nisi Bronson. Come on, my dear. You are welcome. Me, you are welcome to meet ministry. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we just practice for camp meeting. <laughs> yes, brother God. All right, did y'all forget what I just said before we got into this? No. What was the last thing I said? Chew your water. Chew your water. Yes, brother God. And with the salt, it's like you're eating baby food. Say it again. I heard it. When it gets to the solid, you have to chew the food like you're eating baby food. Yeah, you got to masticate until it becomes a little milky because the stomach contains or has no teeth. So if you take one bite into that apple, just one bite, then swallow it. Now the body got to produce more hydrochloric acid or digestive juices to metabolize that. So now you're stressing out the stomach and you do it a long period of time, you weaken your digestive system. So you need to chew until it becomes mushy. You know what I'm saying? You know, like baby food. Well, baby food is a little more smooth than that. <laughs> you know, you're not going to get it to that point. But it needs to be chewed up. Chewed up where you can swallow it. That's why it's not good to be talking and eating, holding conversation. You know how you all are. Cut mics off. Cut all mics off. Come on off. Cut all mics off. <laughs> Cut all mics off. <laughs> well, it's true. You getting ready to say something? Well, you, 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 you said it. All right, thank it's you. It's not good. All right, thank you. Thank you. But I have something else. Okay. Is it edifying? It's very edifying. Okay, go ahead. When we eat, in order to chew the food, we shouldn't be taking in large amounts. No food Take into the mouth. We need to well, put enough. How big is your mouth? Well, it all depends on <laughs> That's you want me to yell, or you uh -huh. want me to eat, or you want me that to sing. That is subjective. <laughs> it's subjective, but that's right. It's subjective to make sure that you are able to chew. chew. That's right. You should not just feel like a little chipmunk. You, you can't chew. That's right. You got to leave room to chew. But if you put the, put the food in, you're not going to chew. That's right. So, the current of life, Ezekiel 411. Who, who got a mic want to read that for me, please? Real quick, let's get on down. All right, Ezekiel 411. So we understand the need of water, the importance of water, and how and how much to drink. It should be very clear. Now, in this, in this little manuscript here for our friends out there, and everybody at the ministry should have one of these, God's Plan Rx explain, not in detail, but explain how much water you should drink and when to drink it in here. So you can get a free copy from Meat Ministry. Who has Ezekiel 4, 11? 11. I do. Thou shalt drink also water by measure. Ah, The sixth that? part of an hen. From time to time shall thou drink. By measure. So that means here we got to measure. Drink according to your body weight. And from time to time, there's time to drink. Now, let's see that we have that. Go to John 4, 14, somebody. We've got a mic close to him. Unless Mr. Carl will continue to read. John 4, 14. All right. That's right. It says, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Mm -hmm. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Now, let me ask you this. As you compare drinking Pure, regular water compared to drinking orange juice or grape juice, which is, is nice drink. Does that satisfy your thirst? It satisfies more of a craving or a, a nutritional need. But water, when you drink water, it satisfies your thirst. You don't thirst after that. Drinking water. Brother I, teacher, tell us a little bit about night drinking. Night drinking? Yeah. Oh, your body should tell you that. We find that it's best to have all your water drunk before going to bed. At least, I would say, five hours before you go to bed. Five hours? Almost oh, definitely. If you go to bed at 9 o'clock, you, you want to drink, you'll get your last water. Now, follow me. I see those expressions on those lovely faces, you all. Man, I tell you, lovely face. I don't know if I get to this, so let me share with you. 
this is the season, time to drink. Upon rising in the morning. All right, now, this might not be applicable to all you guys if you're on your own schedule. But when I say getting up in the morning, I'm not talking about at 10 o'clock in the morning. Say you eat breakfast at 7 a.m. You got to rise, do all your personal, spiritual things. So even while you're doing that, you need to drink at least two glasses of water. Sometimes you can have warm water, and one you can have an extra glass with a cup of lemon water. But that doesn't substitute for your regular water. No, it does not. It does not. That's not part of it? No, it's not. It helps. Uh, do plain water morning. You can have lemon water. Like when you give me lemon water, I'm still drinking my regular water. Mm-hmm. Even when I'm sitting at my desk at whatever time I'm at, you give me warm water, then I have two glasses of water. All right? That is least a couple hours before we eat. Then an hour or two after breakfast, between breakfast and lunch, that's five hours, right? You can get in almost four or five glasses of water between that time. So, you uh, well, wait, wait, wait now. Yeah, just wait. Just listen right now. Okay. All, all the old folks and et cetera. Oh. That, well, okay. That's seven glasses of water from the time you get up to lunchtime. All right? After lunch, 1.30 to 5 o'clock, that's another four hours. That's another four glasses of water right there. Four, four, that's eight. Plus two, that's ten glasses right there. All right? So now that's between lunch and time. Now, say you go to bed. You should go to bed by 9 p.m. So I would say you might can drink another two glasses of water way before 9 o'clock. That's 12 glasses of water right there. Now, if you need more than that, you need to boost up your water intake up in the daytime to avoid getting up unless there's other problems. Avoid so, Brother Teacher, if you go to the bathroom in the night, you wake up, you go to the bathroom in the night, you can drink some water before you go back to bed. I ain't say that. That's what you do. Is something want to, wrong with that? But you hear what I'm saying. What? All your water really should be done way before bed. Now, sometimes I might get, drink, I get water, it's become a habit, but as I realize because it breaks my sleep, man. You, you got to keep going to urinate. Hmm? Oh, that's if you have a weak bladder. Well, don't have to be. Just get all that water in before night because the body definitely don't, body is going to be resting. You don't need the water then at night time. If you're drinking that water on schedule up through the day, you have sufficient water intake. Hmm? Now, why, now, why you drink water late at night? It's because you have not done drink sufficient water during the time, daytime. That's right. Your body is water, water. That's why. That lets you know you're not drinking sufficient water. Mike over here. Mike. Mike. Everybody holding the mic. Do you understand what I'm saying, Carl? Yeah. The yeah. body is craving for that water because we're not drinking sufficient water throughout the day. Yes. Uh, don't you drink your water after, like, right after you eat? Don't you wait for you wait two about, hours? I said that. Yeah. That's what I said. You drink at least an hour or two before you eat. And two hours after you eat, yes. Drinking with meals will definitely interfere with digestion, yes. No, because I, I, I think I was mistaken. No, your mic, your mic, you got to talk in your I mic. I think I was mistaken because you have said that. What did I say? Would, ha- would have five hours. Yeah, I said you have five hours between breakfast and lunch left for you to continue your water drinking. I don't think you heard, heard me when I said you're drinking in the morning at least an hour or two before breakfast. Then after breakfast hour or two. Then between that time you drink that last water to lunchtime, you got another four hours because between breakfast and lunch, you, your body can go five hours before you eat. You understand what I'm saying? After you drink that last water for after breakfast, then you at least have four to five hours to drink more water. Am I clear now? Okay. All right. Two glasses when you wake up, 12 after meal. Right there. Okay. Start each morning by drinking 16 ounces of glass of warm water. It should not be cold water. Cold water tends to suppress digestion. It need be room temperature. You need a mic? You need a mic? Carl, get that young lady a mic. <laughs> 
Okay, you said room temperature. Yes, So ma'am. if your thermostat is set to like 64. Your, your body's thermostat? The temperature house? in the house, okay, yeah. yeah. Is that considered cold? What's that, the water? The water, because it will acclimate to the temperature in the house. Well, room temperature, well, anytime it's not, you know, when you see the, the glass sweating, that's cold. That would arrest digestion. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Okay. 64 degrees is fine. Okay. You know, now, I, used, I leave some, which uh, my young daughter, Lola, is right. If you leave, like I do, I, I put extra bottle of water in my car, but it's in the plastic. So, therefore, it gets hot. As you said, that's not good. Yeah. So, room temperature water. Brother teacher. Yes, sir. All you're talking about is water. Amen. Water works. When shall we drink some juice? Water works. Water works. What about when do we water leave works. No time for juice? Water works. Did you, did you see the template? It says water works. Tea, juice doesn't work for the sales. God did not create the body to subsist on juice. There's nothing wrong with juice. It do, it's not a substitute in no way it would be. So when shall we drink it? When should you what, drink juice? Yeah. Well, when you make sure you got plenty of water. You can drink juice and make sure you got your water. Don't use that for a substitute. I know how we are. You know, the body... It's thirsty. Instead of eating, you can drink juice. You don't do that. <laughs> the, I say, yeah. When your body is craving for liquid, what do you think is the body craving for? Water. Now, you, there's a place you can drink juice, but you got to cultivate your mindset. Look, now, my body is not craving for juice. It wants water. Those cells, those cells could talk to you, man. It says, Water, because now when you're drinking the juice, you you got the sugar that got an extract. It's going to require some metabolism. Water, tea. You know, there's yeah. plenty of time you can have tea. Plenty of time. I can think of times you can have tea and, and juice. You know, just like we used to work out doors when we first got into this work, and all we carried was juice and peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> Orange juice and peanut butter sandwiches. You know about that, Mayweather? You never know about that, huh? Good old, we call it Israelite sandwich. Whole wheat bread, slab of peanut butter with bananas on it and honey. Yeah. That stuff was a clog of marga. <laughs> you need juice. <laughs> that stuff clog you up, man. Huh? So water is good for hydrotherapy. I'm not getting into that. Water on the inside. Water on the outside, especially with COVID-19, hydrotherapy is one of the most, most effective methods of dealing with COVID-19, hydrotherapy. So if the devil come to steal, to steal life, he come to steal your water. How does he do that? Listen, Carl, this is how the devil do that. How he do that? Woo! That's how he steal water. Huh? Look at that. Red Bull, huh? monster nerd. Zero carb. You got all those Red Bull, those those stimulant drinks. That is no water there. Well, why would you drink something that's a monster? Well, <laughs> because we listen to that monster. Hello, that's why they call it a monster. This how the devil steal water, huh? Oh, Starbucks. And that's looking. That's how I steal water. Come on now, the truth should set you free. <laughs> Hello out there, huh? That's, that, that's chocolate cocoa. That's cocoa. That's right. That's the way it's still. It. Life is better healthy. Any question before we get out of the demonstration here? Huh? Healthy by choice. Plant-based diet, regular exercise, abstain from alcohol, caffeine, illicit drugs. Stop smoking, maintain a healthy weight, trust in God. Mm? And God said, I will definitely... Suffer none of these diseases upon you. Yes, my dear. Can you clarify and just clear up a little bit when herbal teas uh, come into place? We still continue to drink the uh, allocated amounts of water throughout the day. Hmm. 
and as you said, the juices addition, the her herbal teas are addition, mm -hmm. is an addition as well. You addition don't let it, you don't let the liquid herbal or addition to your, that the, counts for the your liquids. water. Now those right. don't count for your water. Right, it, it doesn't count, but, but you can still drink it. Yeah, you can still you drink still those, drink yes. Not not tell cough, but but he asked, when can you drink them then if you had to drink all that water? You can get it That in. was his question. It can, well, the, huh? the, the juice comes from the fruit. If you eat the fruit, okay, but you no, get the juice. But with, you're not um, answering that question. <laughs> we know juice comes from fruit, but I'm saying for on, say, got orange juice, juice in the bottle? No. I mean, no. unpasteurized, good kosher juice? Yeah. You can't drink that, huh? You can drink it. You just have to, you have to wing it in. You have to put it in there somewhere. Is she it's having mighty you? hard <laughs> when you're drinking all that water. <laughs> Water, man. Well, the amount of water we have to drink, I don't see where there's room to drink anything else. Well, hello. You know, as, as, as much as I like juice and et cetera, you're right. Sometimes I think I'll be drinking my water, I'll be thinking this and now. I say, up through the day, if I'm in the office, I'm drinking water. I'm trying to, where I put it in at. So it's very rare I can take time. Now, what I have done... Every day, I, I don't be drinking no juice. It might be once a week, a day, like I'm Friday of good day. Now, Sabbath, I don't eat, so I get me a nice little smoothie berry juice. That's when I, I, I drink that in the morning. Because I don't, I don't eat food on Sabbath morning. So unless you're a type of person like we used to be, want to drink juice all day and every day, you you won't have to squeeze it in on top of your water. Hello? And that and water is essential. Water is a necessity. Juice is not essential. But you can drink it. Teas, unless you're going through a, a therapeutic program, herbal teas. There's a place for all of that. You get what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. So going back to tea, could you clarify because tea is mainly made up of water. So sure, why, ju why sure. couldn't that be a part of your drinking of water? All right. Now, you heard what she said. Tea is made up of water. Is that pure water? No. So what has to take place? In order for the cells, now the water, the cells need water. Not tea, not the color of tea. <laughs> it has to extract. It has to, what you call, distill that in order for the cells to benefit from that tea. You get what I'm saying? So when we put people on cleanser, they're not eating any food. They're taking a lot of juice and this stuff. And that means the food, the juicing is not interfering with the digestion of food because they're not eating. You understand what I'm saying? So tea is not a substitute for water. Keep this in mind. The cells need water. Pure water. So you got, so, mo so now if you're from England, then tea becomes a substitute for water. So just adding to that, because many people today have problems drinking just plain water. I know that. Why? And so even like... Why, though? Well, because... Well, because it has no taste. Hello. I mean, compared to many well, other drinks that are being pushed out there. Now listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what you're saying. Because they're drinking all the sweet drinks. If you're drinking 90% of sweet drink, then switch over to water. What do you think the water going to taste like? It has no taste. It's like, it's like God said with the layer of this thing. You look warm. It makes it nauseate me. I'm going to puke you up. Mm -hmm. That's why. I was the same way. I, told, I didn't drink no water when I was an athlete. I, I, drink, I like sugar aid. Do you hear what I... She don't know what sugar aid is. You know what when it's sugar aid? My wife knows what huh? It's Kool-Aid. Kool but I like my Kool-Aid with sugar. When I finish making a, a quart of Kool-Aid, sugar is that thick. Are you listening to me? I drink that stuff. And so I could not appreciate water because mm -hmm. it had altered my taste bud. Mm -hmm. It took me a while to, I mean, the water I'm drinking now in these 44 years, compared to the first 20 years, I did not drink it. Mm -hmm. Water was not something we drank. It just occasion. We had to be, uh, if I was dehydrated, I would get one of those, it was not Red Bull and stuff like that, but I got some other type of drink. Hmm? That's why people don't appreciate water. Right. They have to re-educate their taste buds. That's mm -hmm. what happened to me. So wouldn't it be 
Now, how do you help these people? Yeah, Wouldn't, sure. I mean, tea or something that's sweet. It, that that's would... what I do. If people are not accustomed to water, I tell them start off with their first glass. When they rise in the morning, they just drink. start with a glass of water. If they, now, say I'm working with a person that needs to drink eight glasses of water a day, and they're not accustomed to water. I get them to get in three glasses of water a day. Then after a week or so, we add another and another and another to get that taste. But then I say, what you want to do for every glass of juice you drink, let's substitute for water. I didn't tell them stop the juice, but now I'm trying to get the taste bud change. It's the same way with diet. You talk about a plant-based diet is the best diet. People are not going to change from a flesh diet to a plant-based diet in two days. It's, it's got to be incremental. Mike. But you need a mic. Mike. I think one of the things that would be very helpful to people, those that are not accustomed to water, we need to know what the purpose of water is for. We just like, said that. I, well, we just said that, but most of the time, we don't know what is uh, to be done, why we need it. So when we see all these different areas of our body that needs pure mm -hmm. water, and when we have something added to it, like he said, it has to select and try to get the water as opposed to trying to get past the sugar and the uh, color or whatever it is. But anyway, when we know what that water is going to do for us, then we uh, actually want to and make ourselves do what needs to be because we may have a sickness or something and mm -hmm. it can be related to us not getting sufficient water. We may be constipated because we're not getting the water that we need to. So I think it's an educational process. Most definitely. And people knowing because we're not taught that you need to have pure water, nothing in it, you know, just pure water. Mm. And brother teacher, mm. water should be colorless, mm. tasteless, mm. odorless, mm. and transparent. Mm -hmm. Colorless, mm. tasteless, odorless, listen and transparent. Listen to what he said. Now, did you hear what he said? Water. Repeat it again. Put the mic up. Put the mic up. Water should be colorless, odorless, tasteless, and transparent. No. So when you see them no, wait, fruit wait, wait, water wait, wait. in the store. Honey, honey, look at me. Did you understand? You, you, you have a problem with what he just said? It was just true. Well, I said. Yes, water is colorless. Okay, but he just, he emphasized. Yes, it is tasteless. <laughs> it's good. Thank you, God. Thank you. Hold on. Yes, it is okay, uh, boxing, a hey, boxing tea is drinking coconut water better than still water. With the still... <sighs> The still one. Is coconut water Let me explain this. Now, rainwater is distilled water. By nature, it's distilled water. Now, the distilled water we buy at the store is mechanically distilled. Okay? Now, the reason I'm saying this, when I first got into this water business years and years ago, and distilled water was the key. So I used to drink nothing but distilled water. And I discovered that mechanical distilled water will rob the body of calcium. Mechanically distilled. Now we can drink rainwater if it was not polluted. So distilled water has a place. Most definitely we do it for tea. We do our health gas. But it's not a water that you want to drink every day. Now, drinking coconut water better than still water. I would drink coconut water more than I would drink distilled water, and I would drink pure water more than coconut water. Transparent, colorless, odorless, tasteless. That's right. Alkaline water. That's another it's question. That's it. another commercial process. The body. Blood is 6.5 alkaline. So there's more than water that affects that. Now remember what he says. 
well, he said, taste water is pure water is neutral on the pH scale. So it does not influence the body with the acid or alkaline. Alkaline water, as now the new crave come in, is to try to alkaline your body. So you got so you got food, you got stress, you got sleep, all of that has an impact upon your pH. What is the best water to drink? Soft water. Soft, soft water. water. Soft water, not hard water, that has been chemically treated. If you got a good well, artesian well, a well water that's pure, that's good water. Which is better, spring or distilled water? Well, spring water is natural. Distilled water is mechanical, so spring water will come before distilled water. All right? Good question. Thank you for your message. Very knowledgeable. Thank you very much. Let's move Brother to our teacher, And yeah. water does to the body what nothing else can do. What nothing else can do. Nothing. All right. Any question on that before we do our demonstration here? Another comment. Um, water shouldn't be carbonated water or pure flavored water. water, things like that. It should be pure, pure water. water. Pure water. If it's flavored, it's not water. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, Carl. It should be colorless, odorless, tasteless, <laughs> and transparent. Anything short of that is not water. What y'all think about that? Don't you suppose to oh, don't you suppose to add lemon to your water? Only one time, Park. That's in the morning. You can have warm lemon water in the morning, but you don't have to put lemon into your water throughout the day. Pure water, just one time. Okay? One time. Uh, those questions are very important. Let's see, can we get to God's pharmacy here? Very important question. <clears throat> Let's see here. What are we going to talk about today? You see what's on the table over there? Huh? Potato water. What y'all talking about? Y'all know what y'all talking about? Any other questions out there? No. All right. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. mm. <clears throat> so we get here to do to. All right, here we are. Any other questions before we move on to our next phase? All right, we already answered that question. Very good. All right, what were. Oh, the sound is going down. That's a good thought. All right, we're oh, my goodness. So many councils on water. I was told distilled water was the best. Please clarify further. Uh, well, all depends who told you that. Yeah, I was told that a long time ago. Soft water. What about alkaline water? Water is... Pure water is neutral on the pH scale. Neutral. It's not acid. It's no alkaline. So sad we can't drink rainwater when it's free. Well, if you have a way to filter it, you can drink it. But well, now you just got not drink and catch it in the cup and drink it because of the pollutants. All right? Very good. We're going to have a word of prayer. We got a little short demonstration here to help us. Let's have a word of prayer and thank God for his wisdom. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for these precious sacred hours you've given us from the morning up to now. We thank you for the lessons that we're learning about how to trust you because the truth should set us free. We thank you for the information of this most important law of life, water, pure water. Lord, it is the very means to which you ordain from eternity. Even when the earth may knew, there would be rivers of pure water. And Lord, let us be mindful. Even though our body is not accustomed to drinking that tasteless, colorless, odorless substance, but Lord, we can train these taste buds that they might receive that which is good. But Lord, we have been definitely cultivated 
to go contrary to your word. So give us grace as we set forth the effort to do what is pleasing in your sight, to preserve these bodies in such condition that we can do better service for your name. Now guide us through the remaining as we close out this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we have a little short demo for you. I heard that spring water and purified water is possibly tap water. Well, it depends on who make it. You might be right, unless you got your own spring. Now, some tap water, there are places I've been where tap water, we have measured the pH, has been very good water because they have a nice aqua, aqua in the earth. So you can find a piece of property that has some good water, you're in good shape. That's one of the problems we have. The only disadvantage about us here is the water. But we're surviving. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. Let's get this back on track here. All right. Let's go. I'm going to skip some of this because time is moving with swift transition. I know we just did that. But not this. Now read. The, what does the statement stay here? It says, as religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nation, those who will stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfavorable positions. For their sake, they should, while they have opportunity, to become intelligent in regard to what? Disease, the cause, prevention, and cure. And those who do this will find a field of labor where there will be suffering ones, plenty of them who need help, not only among those of our own faith, but larger among those of others. I have a question. So are you saying we shouldn't drink the still water? I said you should drink it in moderation. It should not be something that you drink daily, all the time. So how do we find pure water? Else, do you have a well? Do you have a place that you can get pure water? Now, all bottled water is not created equal, but you can find some bottled water. I know here we ain't tested here. got a little water here. This is what you well, vapor. Vapor distilled. So it's better than city water. Lesser to evil. Yes, ma'am. To answer that question, what where, question? Uh, where can they find pure water? All right. Uh, you, they can basically go online and do a search for maybe artisan wells in their area. All right. They can buy a uh, um, they get, can Get him the mic. They can uh, do that research and they may discover that they have those wells maybe 30 to 40 minutes All right. from around where they live. All right. And so they can also buy a Berkeley, right. what is it, speak, purified speak water Speak very purified. clearly so they can hear you. They what can is buy it? a Berkeley. Spell that. B-E-R-K-E-R-L-Y. Berkeley. Now, mm -hmm. what is that? A filter? That's a fil water filter All right. system. All right. They can take the tap water and convert it to All right. Did y'all hear that online? Did y'all hear they that? They can take their tap water and convert it into pure water All using right. that Berkeley he, system. Berkeley system. Google babies go on the line and find water. Pure water. Water. If you can't find it, drink the water. As long as it don't have no feces and other pollutants in it. Do the best you can and God will clear that up. If you can't afford any filter, if you, that, that tap water, I believe you can put a filter on that. All right? But most of us move out of the city into the country and find some good water. All right? We know what we stated about disease and understand the whole system of disease. And I pray that I got it on this site. So God's pharmacy. Now, we're going to go into God's pharmacy, our wonderful little book. We're working on the new edition. And you can also get this in our bookstore online. God's pharmacy. Wonderful, practical information in that wonderful book natural remedies and that's what we're going to do here god's pharmacy what grows on the farm Hippocrates says let that food be thy medicine and let that medicine be thy food phytochemicals phytoplant chemical substance is what god put in those plants that is compatible to the human body you take chlorophyll. That's the green blood of the plant. The molecule of the iron, of the hemoglobin molecule, has iron as the center 
Chlorophyll has magnesium. So those two molecules are very similar. As I said before, they used to use chlorophyll for blood transfusion a long time ago. That's why people now are into green drinks, green drinks. They don't, ma they don't care how they combine it. They can have lettuce with bananas. But we always tell you based on that, if you're going to have green drinks, it should not have apples and peaches and bananas in it. If you only thing is neutral, you can put a lemon in it. But green drinks. What about a green apple? Green apple. What? Don't need no green apple. That's what y'all get from the traditional juices. Apple is still a fruit. Talk to me. Stop talking to yourself. Talk to me. Correct me if I'm not mistaken. Come on, hear that. Ah, talk to me. Talk to me. You're, need a mic? Okay. Now remember, you free more air. You can go ahead and put your bananas with your cabbage and your apples with your spinach. You can do that if you want to, but not here. God said, don't mix fruits and vegetables together. I think that's what I read. I believe I, believe I can show that. All right. So now, I would suggest nobody talk to me about that. Go to God. Say, God, you made a mistake. All right, talk to me now. You ready? Let's move on. Huh? And God, behold, the plants here. Description of herbs, the mustard seed parable. But God said, another parable put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it's grown, it is the greatest among herbs and become a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches. So therefore, we find plants as well as trees can be classified as herbs according to this parable. When we think of herbs, we think of teas. But plants, you got the pine tree, juniper tree, you got the peach tree, you got trees out there. We can use the needles, we can use the berries from those trees. That's considered as herbs, dandelion grass, etc. What purpose of herbs? Culinary, nutritional, and medicinal. That's what they food, food, because majority of all medicine that was produced in this country was derived from plants. It's just as a result of the last 20 years, they have changed and now have synthesized these herbs. When we have gone to Germany and done meetings, and when we do God's pharmacy, I will go to the pharmacist and ask for certain products because they still, 25% of the things that they use is a plant-based. So no fruits and vegetables together. Amen to God. If you do, if you if you do, do, if you, do you ask? Oh, yes. Yes, you ask for war in your stomach because you got two different food that requires certain digested juices to metabolize. Absolutely right. Even if they're in liquid form, the same thing will take place. It's no denial of faith to use, to use rational remedies judiciously. What that word you judici judiciously mean? With judgment, wise, water, air, sunshine, these are God's healing agency. The use of certain herbs that God, that the Lord has made to grow for the good of man is in harmony with the exercise of faith. So we can use those as we correctly use them. Notice what it says here. A famous scientist once said, until man duplicates a blade of grass, nature can laugh at his so-called scientific knowledge. Remedies from chemicals will never stand in favor compared with the products of nature, the living cell of the plant, the final results of the rays of the sun. When correctly used, now this is the purpose of herbs. When correctly used, herbs, they do what? They promote the elimination of waste matter and poison from the system by simple natural means. They support nature in his fight against disease. They support. No herbs on the face of this earth cure diseases. It support the body. While drugs just assimilate. Now, if there was an herb that could be, that can cure all diseases or plant or herb, which would you think that you might know of a plant or herb that could cure all diseases if it was so? He said rosemary. Go on and say. 
Aloe vera, and you said what? Turmeric. You said rosemary, and you said gold and silver. Garlic. It would be aloe vera. Now, aloe vera, now garlic, antiviral, rosemary, I guess is what? Good for dilated blood vessel. But you look at, I don't, I don't have it up here, but you have over 300 different types of aloe vera. And when you look at the chemical constituency of the aloe vera plant, you'll see that each one of those, the herbs that you name, that you name, you name, et cetera, aloe vera contains all those nutrients plus more. Even we talk about nutrients that we use for steroids, uh, nutrients we use for aspirin. You go on and on. And you can find that plant on every continent except the North Pole and the South Pole grows. Wow. Aloe vera. And that, when I started using aloe vera, when I first came in contact with AIDS cases, and I was in a country where it did not have golden seal or pork weed, but they had aloe vera growing wild. And as I began to use that, that has been a stay with me in dealing with AIDS, aloe vera, blood pressure, diabetes, you name it, cancer, heart disease, aloe vera. Anybody got aloe vera plant? You got aloe vera is, is it planted? Or you just bought it? I'm saying, do you grow aloe vera? Okay. Okay. You got aloe vera plant? Male or female? Right now, from what I can tell, it's a male who is not producing mm. any babies. Mm. That's because you need the female. You expecting that male to produce? <laughs> you expecting that male to produce? No, I have oh. to let it grow a little bit larger. To determine whether or not it's going, it's a male or a female. How how large is it now? They're still little. Okay, you don't know. Cause I, I don't I don't know. Cause the female gonna to have a lot of babies. The male's yes. not gonna produce no babies. I know that. All right. <laughs> God. <laughs> Most definitely, you can tell. You seen the aloe vera plants at my house? I saw them. You saw the male, sturdy. You saw the female, yes. all kinds of babies going everywhere. Right. But see, I had one just like what uh, the, the big sturdy one, and it was producing babies. Mm -hmm. So Some it's a matter of what uh, sex it is as it gets older. Okay, let's go on. Let's go on. Whoa. <laughs> let's, all right, let's, let, let's go on. Let's go on. We do not want to be censored. So Christ give us some biblical examples of natural remedies, such as John 9, 1, 7. Jesus used clay. <clears throat> Are you listening to me? <clears throat> Hello? Hello? Are you with me? Okay. All right. How much olive oil juice should a person drink? Mm -hmm. All depends on the condition. All depends on the condition. Aloe vera juice is not a juice you're going to take on a regular, regular basis. It depends on the condition. That's what we need to know. You can go from a tablespoon of the gel to a cup of the juice. Depends on the condition. That's why it would be good to get our little book on that. We'll tell you all about aloe vera, okay? So do not make aloe vera a part of your regular routine. All right. <laughs> So we're going to talk about potatoes. How many like potatoes? Yay! I don't like potatoes, but I like potatoes. <laughs> Thank you, British, French, English teacher. <laughs> potato. All right. So let's look at this potato. Very simple. Are, are we growing any potatoes, Cobb? Are we growing potatoes in the garden? No. Okay. You, you saying something, dear? Okay. Very good. All right. So, but this, but white potatoes. White potatoes. All right. Pharmaceutical nutritional properties as a sedating substance called diazepam. It's good for anxiety. That's, in, that's a chemical substance in white potatoes. All right. 
It's an alkaline has an anti-acid effect upon the digestive system. It changes the pH to more alkaline. High in potassium is good for blood pressure. Low in sodium, vitamin C, amino acids, proteins, and lysine, one of those proteins. These are some of the pharmaceutical nutritional properties of white potatoes. This come from, you can read this about that in our book on page 45 to 48. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you're a diabetic, you cannot eat white potatoes. That's what I heard. Are you, you're asking me or you're telling me? Well, that's what I heard. That's mm -hmm. what I heard. I'm, not sh I'm, I'm answering your well, question. You find, you find that, you know, if they say you can eat because maybe the starch content, mm -hmm. white potatoes definitely has 80% carbohydrates. It has fat and small amount of protein with the skins on it. And therefore, with the skin... It would not disturb the, 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 the diabetic process. Diabetic. But if they're eating every day, no. Okay. Yes. Is it good to eat red potatoes? Yeah, red potatoes. potatoes. Most definitely. Instead of the white potatoes? Boiled potatoes with skins. Okay. We ain't talking about French fried potatoes now. We're talking boiled okay. potatoes. Okay. So cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, gastritis, you name it, constipation, <clears throat> colds and flu. Diarrhea, indigestion, celiac, gastritis. We find ulcers. I remember when we was running a health food store in Camden, <clears throat> it was between cabbage and potatoes were used when people came in for stomach ulcers. And we we're going to make potatoes <clears throat> able to assist that and to help to encourage the healing process of the mu mu mucous membrane lining. It goes for burns, boils, inflammation, edema, when you got swelling in the ankle, sinus and sore throat this is what potatoes are good right there at your house in your garden all right so now up at the health center we make a lot of potassium brawl when the when the health guests go on a fast instead of breaking the fast we just put a broth together and that's in the book two medium potatoes one medium onion one to five garlic cloves peeled five carrots three stalk celery one bunch of parsley in a gallon of water, and we simmer it down until it become a broth. And that's what they drink it off. And therefore, when you're fasting and do not want to break the fast, potassium broth. That's also found in the book on page 45 to 48. <clears throat> now, I had another, let's, see, let's go back here. So this is what we're going to do. I, I, I don't think I have the recipe. All right. It's in the book. All right. What we're going to do, we're going to make two things from potatoes. Now, remember, for ulcers, ulcers, one of the most simple things you can do for ulcer, in the book, you take a potato, you wash it, you don't have to peel it, and you simply... Where's my knife here? You're going to slice it probably about an inch thick. It's my wife's fancy stuff. Mm. Just cut that end off here. So you're just going to... Now, do I have somebody can be cutting this while I do something else? Somebody want to come put their hand to the knife? Come on, please. Oh man, I'm gonna cut this stuff. Go do something else. Cut it for me. You want both one cut? No, no. Yeah, slice it. About that thick. Get your quart jar. It's on your book. Got a quart jar. <clears throat> Says you're not gonna drink this. Let me just wash the knife. No, because you got to sit for seven days. Seven days. Is that the broth? No, that's not, no, that's not the broth. When you do the broth, you can eat it immediately. But this is for stomach problems. Gastritis, ulcers, you name it, indigestion. That's what this is good for. So as you cut it up here, you put it all, the whole potato 
in the jar just like this. No. It could be sitting outside the refrigerator some days and just fill it up with water, Donald. Excuse me. Fill up with water. Now, <clears throat> have used this for many years, many years. All right, put the lid on there, sir, and give it a little shake. <clears throat> Let me check my book. I think it's about seven days. All right, you don't have to shake it too much. It's all good. Let's check the book here. All right. So we had a potato water, one quart. I use... I used to say seven days, but here it says here, drink water, leave, so you can leave it overnight. I think that's my eggplant I'm thinking about. So this here, you can just leave it on night, but not in the refrigerator. Just leave it on the counter. But well, since you want to help out, you just stick around. Okay, I got something for that. All right, just let it sit, and then it's already turning cloudy. Overnight, that's probably about eight hours. And then you drink the water off of this. A glass of water three times a day, settle the stomach. Gastritis, indigestion, also for the ulcer. So you want to make sure you wash that potato before you do it. Yeah, you know, but keep the skin, wash it real good, and then you do your thing here. Any question on that? All right. Yeah, for ulcer, gastritis. Inflammation, uh, you can use it for celiac, indigestion, any stomach problem, potato water. Now, what do you have to lose? Inexpensive, and I have used it before, especially with ulcers. I've seen even bleeding ulcers begin to recover, the person recovered from it. And how often do you drink it during the day? You say maybe two or three glasses, you know, morning, afternoon, and evening. You know, you, you try that for about a week or two. Say, I go. Can you eat the potato after? No, sir. Put it in your garden. Composted. Composted. Yes, sir. Put it in your garden. Another question. Now, let's look at the poultice. Well, you can if you want to, because you're not going to touch it. No, they ain't going to drink that. That got to be left overnight. They can't drink this, neither. I'm going to wrap it on somebody. All right, so now, do you not agree? Hmm? All right, now, so we're going to make. What, what are y'all talking about? All right, in our book here, on page 48, potato poultice. You're going to grate one, one or more potatoes, place in a paper towel or a cloth, apply it on the affected area. You may also put directly on the skin, then cover with paper towel or cloth, secure with plastic wrap, and to preserve leaking and leave it on for eight hours. Leave it on for eight hours. Yeah, you can, you're gonna set up on the piano. <clears throat> leave it on for eight hours. This is a potato poultice. Inflammation on the leg. You can have a Insect bite. Anywhere you find inflammation. All right. How are we coming, Donald? <laughs> huh? They're looking out for you? <laughs> All 
All right. Let's try one of these. Now, who has some information anywhere? Information on the arm, leg, swelling? You do? Where? Right there? Okay. Have a seat. I'm going to put the poses on you, man. Yes, sir. Have a seat there, man. Huh? Carol, you want to come and assist me here? This is your husband. Because if he say anything that I did to him, now, Which way? You know, over this side. Now, we are putting a disclaimer on this. Disclaimer. So, potato, water, night heals. I didn't say heal celiac. I said it's good for You need to let the potato water sit overnight, then drink it. Now, I want my audience to realize this, that when we're dealing with, now remember there's four steps to dealing with disease. Four steps. First of all, we must ascertain the cause. That's number one. Two, we must correct or change unhelpful conditions. Please listen to me. Thirdly, correct wrong habits. Then assist nature. Now, what we're doing now is the then. So if you have celiac, the potatoes, now remember, these are going to support your body. But if you're still following the same lifestyle that contributed to it, no, it's not going to work. And do not expect What about that? Other way? You, did, did, did I get you, man? Okay. So you, right there. Okay. I just want to emphasize our guests out there. So do not expect taking potato water going to take care of celiac overnight. You're going to have to be consistent. And also you need to, if you don't have a specific program, you contact us or you download this copy here so you know what type of lifestyle program you need to be on. Celiac, the lining of that stomach is becoming irritated. And as a result of certain foods you're eating, the stress in your life can cause celiac. So get this little basic generic handout, then follow this. I hope, Sarah, that answers your question. Do not expect something overnight unless God see fit. I hope we are clear on that. Please be clear that it took time for sickness to come about. All right. Uh, excuse me, Ma. Excuse me, lady. Uh, in health guests, do not take your nails and punch his wound. Put some gloves on. Please. She's in training. What about for arthritis and joints? Oh, this right here, there's something better. I, have, did I did a program on arthritis yet? Yeah. Uh, you can get our information on arthritis. We have a book called Taking Itis Out of Arthritis. Go to our website. I think it should be in our store. And I share it on this. I do not use uh, potato, uh, potato poultice on arthritis. I use castor oil and there's other things we use. So we got information on how you do with arthritis because I used to have arthritis. Okay, we're going to make the poultice here. All right? No, we're not using, we don't need all of this. Let's see, how, where's the inflammation at? Right, right in this area here? Yeah, I see, right in there. So, Carol, let's see. We can, so where I got that, that's where the inflammation? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, we might can use, well, I should have, that's, Put the poultice in there. Spread the poultice. Now, ho hold this up for me. I'm going to show you. So the great, he grated the potatoes. And that's, can y'all get that in the camera? You got that? And so we have, you can use a, a cloth or paper towels. So you're going to spread that. Cheese cloth. Che oh, cheese cloth, yes. Okay. 
Not really. Just enough to cover the area and kind of spread it out. Mm-hmm. Enough to cover the area. There you go. Let's add a little more on the side. All right. That's good. Now, when somebody mentioned arthritis, also you can use castor oil rubs for arthritis. <clears throat> castor oil rubs. And you're going to make that just fold. Now, you put that straight on or you can just fold it. You know, like, yeah, just fold it. There you go. Mm-hmm. And fold, fold your ends. There you go. That's right. Mm-hmm. Now, hold it up for the audience so they can see that. Ah, other way, my dear. There you go. So they fold it. Then you come over here and put it on the area. And we're going to get some clean wrap. Hold it. Now, turn it the other way. Well, that'll be good. So you want to uh, put the wrap on to hold it. Mm -hmm. Might need some scissors here. Uh, just pull it out because uh, this thing, here. I got some scissors. Well, pull that and let's, let's cut it with some scissors. Enough to wrap that. Is that going to be enough? Do we bring it up there? My secretary, I need a new secretary. You blaming my wife, man? Okay. All right. I just, I'm just checking you. <laughs> You're a wise man. Secure it good now. Oh, man. That's all right. We in good shape. Should we cut it? Watch your finger. Thank you, Wesley. All right. That looks good, man. That's oh, credit card. <laughs> Master card. Okay. <laughs> All right. Can we can we get the camera? So oh gosh. <laughs> I got you. See, can you just bend it, Donald? Now can y'all get a picture of that? You good? Now that is a potato. Poultice. Just we got a nice white potato here. Huh? Yeah. And therefore, and what sometimes I do, I rub castor all over it, then I put the potatoes on. So that's Did a key. No, no salt, just plain potato. Yes, sir. How long should it stay on there? Eight hours. Eight hours. All right. How often should you do it? Do it? Well, you find after eight hours, you change, you can change it again. At least give it a good week and see how it goes. And he got some information, but it's not swollen real bad. You can sleep on this. Now, if you take a shower, it's over with. Okay. All right. You, any questions? Thanks, Donald. Very much. All right. Any questions there? We all good? Easy to do? All right, then. Until next time, next time, come back, same time, same station, for more God instruction. Yes, sir. Potato that you put to soak overnight to drink, um, you cut it and you put it in the glass jar. This one here? Yes. Uh-huh. If you grate it, you can do the same thing with it? Um, you don't want to... Like, like Wesley says here, it oxidizes quick. You want to cut at least an inch, two inches. And all you want for the water to gradually absorb the nutrients from the potato. So you don't want to, po you don't want to pulverize it. You okay. You want to slice it, yeah. Well, thank Hold. you. That's right. Two things for potatoes. God bless. Those are... All right, then. We thank our friends for joining us. And remember, you can order our book, taking the itis on the arthritis and also you can get this little handout online 
in God's pharmacy. Tell you how much aloe vera to use, but aloe vera is not a regular drink. It's only for medicinal purpose. Water. Then you can have coconut water, but pure water. How many glasses you should drink a day? Oh. Half your body weight in ounces. When to drink? That's right. Start first thing in the morning. Where does lemon water come in at? Morning. Should you drink lemon water all throughout the day? No, you don't need that. Hydrate yourself. Tell me where does the water, where does the body compensate for itself when you dehydrate it? From the brain. What else? The blood. The joints. Intestine. Lungs. That's right. Start, huh? The colon. Absolutely. You start getting little headaches, drinking water. And like I said, cops, you're out there in the heat, perspiration. Is the body way of cleansing, but you have to replace that with water. Pure water. Pure water. Any other question we got? Praise God. Thank you for the volunteer. If you're leaving all night, we'd like to see what take place. You can be excused tonight from not taking a shower. Take a bird bath. <laughs> all right. You know what a bird bath is? I heard of it, but uh... your wife knows what a bird bath is. Because I'd like to see what takes place if you keep it on all night. Keep that sock on just in case you, you, know, you toss and turn. You know, just for the night, see how it goes. You can give a report next week. All right. Anything, Marilyn? Any questions? All right. You straight? Mm-hmm. Everybody good. All right. Let's have a word of prayer and thank God for a blessed Sabbath. Thank you all for participation. Oh, gracious Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, that you are our God, a sovereign God. You are God of wisdom. And Father, you know the workings in and out of these human bodies. You have ordained a plan for us to preserve the integrities of these bodies. You've given us a health plan. You've given us these precious laws of health. And even, Lord, you allowed the herbs to grow from the earth to serve not only for culinary purpose, but medicinal purpose. Father, it is our purpose to become more educated in these precious laws, that we might be fit vessels to touch other lives. Now, Lord, as another Sabbath has gone into eternity, we pray as we commence another week that you give us strength, the breath of intellect, the physical capacity to perform the duties you set before us, but most of all, Lord, we need a heart like Jesus, that we can be a help to one another, to encourage, to help one another, to be built up in the most holy faith of Christ. Thank you for our friends online, all the questioning. I pray, Lord, you too minister your grace to them. The prayer request has gone forth that you attend to them and make that in divine intervention in every situation. We thank you for the ability to be online for the, even the ability to continue to communicate. So guide us, direct us, and lead us in the plain path of righteousness and grant us a refreshing rest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May we have a refresh. to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes and
If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have. Exodus 15, verse 26. 